have. So George Knapp, have at it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. The, uh, the Atomic Testing Museum, of course, uh, appreciates you all being here. I know a lot of you are drawn by this particular event because it is going to be really interesting, but I hope if you haven't had a chance to tour the museum, you take a look either this time or the next time you come back because it is a world-class facility. Uh, we expect to uh, have an invigorating and enlightening uh, cacophony of conversation here tonight with a panel of these Cold War warriors uh, to talk about the most famous, best-known secret base in the world, uh, and what went on out there, uh, Groom Lake, Area 51, whatever name you use, it's been sort of part of my life for more than 20 years, uh, not in the same way as for uh, the folks up here on tonight's panel. I, I guess I've been out there maybe a hundred times, you know, uh, dodging uh, dust devils and security patrols uh, over the years just to see what we could see from the outside. And while I realize I'm never going to be allowed to go inside and look around, it's still played a big role in my life, and probably when I die, there'll be something about Area 51 in my obituary, rightly or wrongly. Uh, it hasn't been that long ago that tonight's uh, event simply would not have been possible, as T.D. mentioned. Uh, the government, I think, still gets a little lump in its throat, a little cough in its throat, when it has to admit that there's anything out there other than coyotes and dirt clods. Uh, the men on tonight's panel were sworn to secrecy and oaths so serious that, as mentioned, they couldn't even tell their own spouses what was going on out there or what they did. But as we now know, some of the secrets of Groom Lake, some of them have been declassified uh, to an extent in recent times, in part because of the efforts of, of TD and some of the other roadrunners. And it's a story that needs to be told. Uh, the folks who uh, toiled in obscurity out at Area 51 to a large degree, and I'm not exaggerating, are responsible uh, for our side winning the Cold War. And as we're going to hear tonight, Cold War is not always an accurate term. It was a hot war at a lot of times, although the American public wasn't allowed to hear those stories about what was going on. These folks uh, developed the eyes and ears of our intelligence agencies, developed them right out there in the Nevada desert. Uh, they were and are the most amazing planes ever built. And, and until that day arrives when, you know, they allow me to go into the base and kick open the doors to the hangar where they keep all the flying saucers, I would say... <laughs> I would say that these flying machines developed out there are still the best uh, the world has ever produced, our world anyway. And uh, I am uh, very thankful to TD for helping to uh, convince the rest of the Roadrunners to forgive me my earlier transgressions uh, regarding stories I've aired about Area 51 over the years. Uh, over the last couple of years, as mentioned, I've had a chance to get to know he and some of the other Roadrunners that show up at their events, and you know, there's a couple of raised eyebrows here and there once in a while, but uh, I'll tell you, without exaggeration, I can't get enough of this stuff. Uh, the stories are wonderful and important, and they're funny, and tonight you get to hear them too. You might have mentioned, I'll give a plug to the CIA store. It's like Crazy Eddie's House of Spy stuff, if you want to buy something out there. And, uh, of course, the museum has its store of its own. Um, um, I also want to recognize Susan Peterson. She's here representing uh, Congresswoman Dina Titus, who's a major supporter. Susan, say hi. Dina Titus is a major supporter of the uh, Atomic Testing Museum. I think she's got a reading room over there and, and has written a book about the test site and I'm sure would be here tonight if she could. Now, as for proceeding tonight, there is no procedure as far as I know. It's sort of like what they did out at Area 51. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. So I'm going to start with uh, starting this way. We're going to tell some stories. Later on, you'll have a chance to ask your own questions. Starting on the other end, let's, let's do it this way. Let's start with how you were recruited to work out there, what they told you you were going to do, or what they didn't tell you what you're going to do, and what did you actually do? 